We live in some of the most abundant times in all of human history, but despite this, there is still so much suffering. And a lot of this suffering is self-inflicted with people being addicted from things anywhere to drugs to social media. It feels like everybody has a vice that keeps them distracted from what they actually need to be doing. But despite all of this negativity, the self-improvement niche has continued to grow year after year with things like self-improvement books and self-improvement videos becoming more and more popular. It does seem like people are actually trying to make a necessary change in their lives. I personally have started a self-improvement journey where I've tried to be more focused on what's actually important to me and it has definitely changed my life. I feel so much happier and I feel like my life has actual meaning and purpose. And because of how impactful this has been for me, I want to share with you the core self-improvement pillars that will get you started on a self-improvement journey. The first main pillar of self-improvement that a lot of people do start with is physical health and physical fitness. Physical fitness is definitely one of the most easy self-improvement things to quantify because you can quite literally see the problem progress, it is something that a lot of people start with. The main quality fitness has taught me personally is an ability to push out of my comfort zone. Often comfort is one of the most dangerous things to people who want to be successful. When you're too comfortable, there's no real motivation to get out of the situation you're in. And even though things might be comfortable, they're not necessarily good. And through exercise, I've learned to push outside of my comfort zone and honestly get comfortable in the discomfort. The form of fitness I've stuck with for the longest time is weight training. And weight training requires you to be uncomfortable in order to grow. In order to build muscle, you have to push to a point close to failure in order to break down muscle fibers so that you can rebuild them stronger. And even if you're doing cardiovascular training or pretty much any other form of fitness, you're going to require some level of discomfort in order to improve. And this is so important because once you can get used to that feeling of discomfort and master that feeling, it becomes comfortable in an ironic sense. Rather than feeling like this is something you can't handle, it becomes something much more manageable. And while it doesn't necessarily translate perfectly to every other situation, it allows your brain not to fear discomfort or rash. Often in order to gain a quality or a skill, you need to go through discomfort and the period of sucking at something to get better at it. And often we are so afraid of that feeling because of how uncomfortable it is. And through physical fitness, you can just learn to become familiar with that feeling and really not shy away from it. And while physical fitness is by no means the end all be all to self-improvement, it's a very good starting block and can teach you both confidence and this feeling of comfort within discomfort that so many people need to learn. The second big pillar of self-improvement is mass mastering your emotions. And what I mean by this is essentially learning to be stoic. Now, stoicism is a philosophy that is often misunderstood. It does not mean not feeling any emotions or not caring about anything. But what it rather means is an ability to not listen to your impulses and go based off logic and what you actually need to do. Now, of course, you're going to feel a wide variety of human emotions throughout the entire day, and that is completely normal, and that's what you should be feeling. However, often our emotions are not necessarily the cue for our behavior. An example of this is if you get cut off in traffic, Traffic, most of the time your reaction is going to be anger and you're going to want to get back at the person who might cut you off or drive in front of them or maybe flip them off or something. Now all of those possibilities make sense but if you think about it for about two seconds you're going to realize that that action almost had no impact on your day. You're probably not going to get to your destination any later and honestly you're probably better off just doing nothing and remaining disciplined in your emotions. That's a very specific example of anger but a lot of our emotions rule so many aspects of our day. Whether it be going on social media or eating something something you know you shouldn't, often you're doing so because it's an impulsive emotional reaction, not because it's something you need to be doing. Think about last time you ate a chocolate chip cookie, for example. It's probably something that is highly pleasurable, but now does it have any value to you? Probably not. But if you stuck to a diet for a long time, you understand how much better you feel now. And because these two things are so opposing, you have to decide to either choose temporary pleasure or long-term success. And when you listen to strictly your emotions, often you will favor that pleasure because it's what feels good in the moment. And of course that makes sense. It makes sense to want to feel that pleasure in the moment. And of course there are some times when that is totally okay. However, if you're chasing a goal, it often requires the sacrifice of that temporary comfort. And most of the time that temporary comfort is fleeting at best and often won't even be as good as you expect it to be. And in order to see growth, you have to listen to that inner voice that knows what to do to make the right choice with your diet or with your work schedule and stick to it rather than listening to your emotional temporary pleasure response. The other benefit of mastering your mentality and having a stoic demeanor is the opportunity to grow. And like I said before, getting cut off in traffic is a very frustrating experience. Often you want to react and flip the guy off or cut them off back and it is a very frustrating situation. However, if you choose to succumb to any of those responses, you're not going to be learning anything 
anything or growing as a person. However, what Stoicism teaches is that every obstacle is an opportunity for growth. So for example, with the car, if you get cut off, that is an opportunity to practice patience. And if you look at almost any challenge throughout your day, most of the time there is some opportunity within that challenge for you to grow as a person. You may be thinking this is just a mentality change, and to some extent it is, but what this really does is it allows you to build up character traits for when they're more needed. Yeah, it's not going to be a big deal if you respond really irrationally or emotionally to that guy cutting you off in traffic, but how is it going to feel when you're in a situation that requires more stress and elicits more anger from you? If you can't deal with a small situation with clarity and emotional control, how are you expect yourself to deal with bigger, more life-threatening situations that will probably inevitably come. But like I said, mentality is a pillar of self-improvement for a reason because it is a skill you need to develop. And you absolutely need to see things as opportunities because doing so allows you to get the reps you need to actually build up these skills. If you just want to develop these skills, often it is impossible to actually get there. But if you use every little situation as an opportunity to build the skills, like I've said before, you really can get there. And also as a byproduct, I found that I'm much more happy and a lot of these little situations do not bother me nearly as much as they would have a year ago or two years ago because back then every little situation could ruin my day at a moment's notice. And again, this is a skill you need to develop. Do not beat yourself up if you react emotionally because that is a very natural thing to do. It's more normal to do that than to react with purely logic and reasoning. However, now that you're aware of this, it's something to take note of and reflect on. I found that journaling and writing down situations I'd like to have handled better is a very helpful thing for this. Again, not because I want to beat myself up, but because when I take note of it, I remind myself of the cues and the triggers that had me react that way so next time I have a similar situation I know how to handle it much better than I did the first time. Additionally reading about stoicism and this philosophy has helped me personally greatly so if you want to check out books like Meditations or books by Ryan Holiday like The Obstacle is the Way these are very good introductions to the stoic mindset and stoic philosophy as a whole. The third and final pillar of self-improvement I'll talk about today is a relationship with God or some form of spirituality. Now, the practice of stoicism and a good mentality requires that you accept that certain things are out of your control and only try to control and put all your effort into the things you can control. And because there are so many things in our lives we can't control, often you need a bigger purpose or something to turn these issues over to. For me, I'm Christian and a Catholic, so when I have these issues that are outside of my control, I often turn them over to prayer because I truly do believe that once I do so, I can focus better on what's actually important to me. Also, I do strongly believe that God does have a plan for everybody and that he will be able to resolve some of these issues or provide opportunities for growth. And that's why it's so important that you have some sort for a spiritual relationship. Because if you start to see the world as strictly random or chaotic, you can often go down this road of nihilism that leads into more and more suffering. I fell down a very bad nihilism rabbit hole when I was in high school, and this led me to feeling super depressed for months on end because I essentially allowed this to mean that I could give up on pretty much everything that was important to me. I stopped trying in school. I didn't really care about how I treated my friends or family. And honestly, I became so far from the person I want to be. It's honestly even embarrassing for me to even bring this up now days. I feel ashamed of who I was back then and all of it was because I thought the world had no meaning. But now as I reflect and embrace my religion, I've started to realize how much more beauty and how much more meaning I do get out of life every and each day. Often life can feel challenging and it can feel like you're just suffering all the time. However, if you start to learn that there is a reasoning and a method behind all of this madness, it feels like you really can grow in these situations. I also do believe outside of the scope of just self-improvement, there are so many other benefits in terms of community and other other things you can get from religion. But I do think that in terms of self-improvement, allowing God to guide you and having some sort of spiritual side is absolutely essential for everybody who's trying to grow and add a purpose to their life. If self-improvement interests you, please do consider subscribing because this Friday I'm starting up the Grow With Me series, which is going to be essentially my vlog series, which is going to cover everything from fitness to just the self-improvement thoughts that I'm thinking about. So if that interests you, please do consider subscribing to the video if you did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.